Coming up, we talk with an FCA officer about CU at the Pole. And have a promotional video from Beta Club. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Good morning, Oviedo. I'm Matthew Manorino. And I'm Brianna Vibona. Today is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. Today is the last day of summer. But that's okay, because tomorrow's the first day of fall. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, FCA gathers for their annual event, See You at the Pole. For more on what that event is, let's head over to reporter Caroline Krivenos, who's with an officer for FCA. Hey, Oviedo. It's Caroline Krivenos, here with Hunter Rios, a member of FCA. Hunter is going to tell us a little bit about See You at the Pole tomorrow. So, what is See You at the Pole? Well, See You at the Pool is an annual event that FCA and Seminole County holds where everyone, Christians, FCA members, and even anyone of you would just like to join could just stand around the flagpole, pray over family, over your life, over any assignments in school. Um, you could just pray over anything. And why do you think people should come out to See You at the Pool? Well, people should come at See You at the Pool just for the love and presence, like you could just ask God for anything and just being around people is just, it, it's great. It's just the love and peace. Thank you, Hunter. See you at the poll takes place tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. at the flag poll. Um, please get to campus early if you'd like to attend. Now back to the studio. For all girls interested in playing basketball, we are meeting in the old gym weight room Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.30. We also have open gym at 6 a.m. in the old gym on Wednesdays. And if you have any questions, see Coach Bronga in Building 8, Room 12. Students that drive, please make sure you park in your assigned spots. If you take someone else's spot, it causes a domino effect in the parking lot. A reminder for new members of FEA to return their applications to Ms. Rogers' room at 8.15 today by 2.30. Students will need their digital ID to get into Homecoming Dance this year. It is a free app. There will be a girls' weightlifting informational meeting on Thursday, September 23rd in Coach Evans' class, Building 8, Room 203. It will be about 15 minutes long to go over all the info needed for the beginning of the season on October 11th. If you have any questions, please contact Coach Evans. Fellowship of Christian Athletes Club will be meeting today. Face-to-face -face meetings will be held during both lunch periods A and B. Lunch A will meet in room 5206 and lunch B will meet in 8030. The first brain will practice will be today in Miss Darling's room 817. We will begin at 230. See you there. The next art club meeting has been rescheduled. We will meet on Monday, September 27th in room 522. Hey Oviedo, I'm Nicole Schultz, your Beta Vice President. And I'm Emma Aguilar, your Beta President. Here's some highlights from this week's Beta Beach cleanup. <laughs> The right to vote seems like it would be a central component in a country that was paving the way for democracy worldwide. However, in the 18th century, voting eligibility was generally restricted to landowners with other restrictions differing by state. 
the Constitution did not specify who exactly had the right to vote, and the issue was largely left to the states, meaning that a person's right to vote could vary from place to place. A few states permitted freed slaves to vote provided they met the requirement of land ownership, but others only permitted white men to vote. Women were largely excluded as were non-land owners. Five years after the Civil War and the abolishment of slavery, the 15th Amendment of the United States Constitution was ratified. It prohibited any citizen, regardless of race, from being denied the right to vote. However, it wouldn't be until World War I, as many women worked to support the wartime effort, that public opinion began to change on the guarantee of a woman's right to vote. The 19th Amendment granted this right and was ratified less than a century ago in 1920. Yet despite these rights being enshrined in the Constitution, many non-white citizens were kept from voting by state and local governments through discriminatory laws such as literacy tests, poll taxes, and religious tests. Poll taxes would be banned in 1964 by the 24th Amendment of the Constitution. All discriminatory election practices would also be banned with Congress's passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. The final constitutional amendment related to voting would be the 26th Amendment, passed in 1971, which lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. That's all we have for you today, Obito. Make sure you get out those fall decorations for the upcoming season. I'm Matthew Manorino. And I'm Brianna Bibota. Have a great day, Lions.